Well, COVID uh, is a new infection uh, which people were not prepared to face, you see. Although we, were, we commonly confront uh, viral infections and other uh, microorganisms responsible for different infections, but COVID was a pandemic which uh, just spread all over the world like a wildfire, you see. We were not prepared for it, especially during the first wave. Nobody was prepared, in fact. Uh, the second wave, people were prepared, but uh, it, it was quite deadly. And now, of course, fortunately, it has come under uh, under control. Actually, fairly well controlled disease now. So it has changed the norms of the practice. Almost every disease management has been affected. The practice of uh, doctors as well as the patient's attitude to disease uh, has also been adversely affected. For respiratory physicians in particular, COVID has been a very devastating uh, problem, you see, because uh, patients do not feel comfortable without being examined, without uh, being auscultated in that sense. And there are a lot of investigations which require him or her to, to breathe, for example, lung function tests, people have to do the bronchoscopy, which means inserting uh, some bronchoscope to see the lungs and, and so on, the sputum examination, the other. Th so we could not do anything. So naturally, one has to resort to a distant kind of uh, medicine, the telemedicine, you see, uh, inquiring about patients and then, uh, then giving uh, the treatment, is writing prescriptions, etc. So, of course, people were ill prepared and now better prepared, better to handle even telemedicine or medical practices, I think. So, the practice norms have been very adversely affected. Certainly, of course, the, uh, the respiratory hygiene and as well as the public health measures. Uh, uh, used for disease prevention. Now people are conscious because of the lot of stress uh, on these issues, both by governments, by administration, and by by uh, the doctors. You see the medical fraternity. So uh, I think that is one good point. You can say that it has uh, prevented uh, the the occurrence of other respiratory infections, at least temporarily. That has happened. Uh, but now people know the importance of uh, uh, avoiding uh, contact, uh, the breathing contact, uh, in, I mean the, the adoption of uh, public health measures. COPD is a very common, common disease which is widely prevalent and uh, that is a very kind of progressive disease which in the long run proves to be fatal. You see. Uh, and one of the important complications of COPD is the occurrence of pulmonary embolism uh, because the COPD patients, uh, especially when severe disease, uh, is immobile, you see. Uh, he can't walk rapidly, do exercises, and even in more severe disease, he may be bedridden, you see. So that increases the risk of pulmonary embolism, partly because of uh, stagnation of blood flow, as well as for other factors which increase the thickness of the blood, you see. So the, the chances of pulmonary embolism are certainly more, you see. As far as the, the effect on COVID or COVID effect on COPD is concerned, I will say that um, uh, most important is that you cannot really uh, teach the, the treatment of uh, COPD, especially with the reference to inhalation therapy. Then the respiratory rehabilitation, which requires a, a kind of closed, closeness to the patient's respiratory exercises, that cannot be uh, done uh, because of the fear of COVID use. Well, emphysema is the lung hyperinflation when the it, it is a kind of a manifestation of COPD uh, when the air is inhaled, but uh, there is a air entrapment in the lung and you cannot really exhale it out. So with every time, every breath, in fact, some air is left 
uh, within the lungs and over the long run uh, there is air entrapment and uh, increase in the size of the lung what we call as hyperinflation and this is responsible for uh, impairment of uh, lung function and then other consequences which will happen in due course of time. Say. Of course, em emphysema is not just hyperinflation. Along with it is accompanied is the lung destruction. See, the lung alveolar walls they are destroyed uh, as the lungs distend more and more. There is alveolar destruction. So obviously, the the lung function is uh, greatly impaired. You see. Well, the, the immuno uh, expressive therapy is of course not uh, not uh, useful at all. The immune enhancing agents, they may have some beneficial effect, uh, which is non-specific, I will say. But uh, by and large, uh, what is required are the respiratory exercises and rehabilitation therapy, you see. So, immunosuppressants are used for only an inflammatory diseases, and emphysema is uh, actually a, what is a lung destructive disease, you see, it's called. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.